Welcome back to The Talking Edge. I'm Josh Kincaid, and this is your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we are live at the World Trade Center in Seattle talking about bud tenders. They're the critical link between bankruptcy and billions. Today, we're here with some uh, fascinating guests. And so we're going to get jumped right into our panelists here. First, we have Alec Langston. He's a bud tender at Dockside Cannabis. Alec has been a cannabis enthusiast for several years and has been bud tending for about three years now. His passion is educating people about cannabis and bud tending, which has been a great outlet for that, being a bud tender. His goal is to help as many people and experience this wonderful plant as possible. His favorite part of the cannabis industry is changing that perception of cannabis skeptics and watching customers benefit from the guidance that's incredibly rewarding. And he's looking forward to developing within this industry and meeting new people along the way. We also have Brian Yeager, CEO of LemonHaze.com. LemonHaze is a cannabis tech platform with a history of presenting industry data and more recently hosting events with a focus on bud tenders, which is providing innovative and relevant education, networking opportunities, and business exchanges along with nationally recognized entertainers who have a prominent voice in the normalization and growth of recreational cannabis industry. Ashley is a bud tender at Green Lady Pot Shop in Olympia. She's a bud tender uh, in Olympia with a medical marijuana certificate. Rebecca Berry is a senior account manager at Work. Work is an all-in-one workforce management solution for highly regulated markets, including the cannabis industry. They've created an intuitive application to manage payroll, HR, timekeeping, and tax compliance with everything you need to streamline operations, reduce labor costs, and minimize regulatory risk. And also, remotely, is Claire Kaufman, Director of Client Services at Brightfield Group. Claire's nationally known CBD and cannabis business and marketing strategist. She currently works as the Director of Client Services at the Brightfield Group, an industry-leading CBD and cannabis market research firm. Claire has worked in the CBD and cannabis space for the past seven years. She's worked in-house for vertically integrated cannabis companies and formerly as a Northwest Regional Director for BDS Analytics. Claire has also recently served on the OLCC, Recreational Marijuana Business Council in Oregon. Her take on the future trends of the cannabis industry and the question facing marketers and entrepreneurs are sought out by national and international media, cannabis industry leaders, and key players in the traditional marketing world. I'd like to thank everybody for being on board and being on the, the Talking Hedge podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. And about the World Trade Center, the World Trade Center Tacoma grows trade and investment by providing direct access to the largest business network in the world with 300 offices in 99 countries. The World Trade Center in Tacoma is a loan trade service center for the Pacific Northwest. They have seminars and award ceremonies, conferences that can generate contacts and contracts. Trade research can clarify opportunities and their matchmaking can turn those opportunities into trade. One of the things that I like about the World Trade Center is it gives me peace of mind knowing that I can use international guarantees or bank, uh, bank guarantees uh, as a member. And also the e-commerce export store, they partnered with Alibaba, which is translated into 18 languages and provides an opportunity to sell your product online internationally uh, to hard to reach places like Asia. So transitioning into job growth, there's at least 165,000 workers in the cannabis business across the country, according to MJ Business Daily. So it's a newsletter that tracks the cannabis industry. And in Colorado, the most established cannabis market in the country has over 1,000 dispensaries, almost 1,500 grow operations, and over 500 processors. There's over 38,000 people that have cannabis careers in Colorado. In the state of Washington, there's 465 dispensaries, 1,100 grow operations, 253 processors, and almost 11,000 people employed in business, including almost 4,000 in dispensaries alone. And yet in restaurants, we've seen a lot of touch screens that are being added for ordering. And I'm wondering in the future with vending machines, online orders, and touch screens to eliminate uh, you know, labor costs, how will brands differentiate or stand out if they're going to try and automate bud tenders? How are they going to stand out for bud tender recommendations or, or customer purchases? I could chime in um, on this one. When restaurants automate and use technology, a consumer understands what a salmon is. They understand, you know, what a salad is. They've got a experience level with eating <laughs> that they don't have with cannabis. And I also think that's important when you sell most CPG products, consumer packaged good products, you're really selling it twice, right? Because the first time you're selling it, the consumer hasn't tried it yet. 
So that's when your packaging speaks and that's when your, you know, blood tender incentives matter. And that's when um, the, the presentation of it really matters because the consumer hasn't tried yet. So that's the, their perceived value of the product. But the second time you have to sell it is you have to deliver. The product has to deliver. And that's how you get that repeat purchase. So I think we're likely to see a division between products that customers buy for the first time and products that customers come back to buy. I think that um, we might see initial purchases still be driven by blood tenders, but repeat purchases perhaps be driven by online once the consumer and brand loyalty has been won. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna back that up with um, like a, a lot of customers that come in and they'll they'll talk to me for a bit and they'll find out what they want and you know why they want it and you know my goal, my selling style is education. Like I'm gonna tell someone the most information possible about that product, right? Um, but with those online orders, I think what that comes down to online orders specifically is those are for people that know what they want, right? That have been using it consistently. They don't necessarily need to come in and learn new information about it. They can just order it online. They know what they're getting. They know it works and they get that 10%. And, you know, um, of course, a big, a big deal of that is money too. That 10% really does help a lot of people out. Um, On the other side of that, some people are willing to not get the 10% discount just to come interact with the butt tenders with the team just in case there's new information and at dockside specifically like we're not really perturbed if someone wants to change their online order or like they come in and they're like oh hey alec like what's new what's going on and i say oh well actually this is new this came in we can add it to your order that's fine um so i think that's kind of where that that specific area comes in just quick question that's actually you guys, uh, based on that. So I've always been kind of curious about this. It's one thing that we've always noticed. So, uh, uh, it, this is keep arguing this, but you know, in my opinion, marijuana is a commodity. It, it's it's something that's bought and sold on on a certain uh, you know on a certain price point for what it is, regardless. But it's also like wine because your crop for wine is one year, your crop for wine is the next year. So if I walk in and I'm just going to pull this out, if I walk in and I buy Trailblazing Blue Dream. Um, I may walk in two months later, same retailer, still trailblazing, still blue dream, but it's a different crop. It may be a totally different effect. Does that affect, uh, does that affect people's ability want to go back and order the same thing or do they want to ask about the crops and things like that? It's really hard to still explain to people that same thing, that weed is more like wine than anything else because numbers go up and numbers go down depending on what they had tested, whether that had been a plant in the west side of the room or a plant on the east side of the room. Some One can be 31, one can be 21. So especially with like the lower budget stuff, People are very picky. If it doesn't continuously test at the same percentage, they, it's it's no good to them anymore. <laughs> Even though it's the same strain, that's probably going to give them the same effect. And Alec had mentioned the consistency is, is a huge portion. We're seeing that with uh, with pre-rolls, and that's a lot about um, convenience, but, but people want consistency. Uh, and yet with wine, you can see that you know 2015 might be a good year, whereas 2017 might be a bad year. Um, and yet with Blue Dream, I mean, that thing has been bastardized where it was a sativa. <laughs> and now I swear, I, I just bought Blue Dream and I am convinced it's it, maybe not an indica, but an indica leaning hybrid. And it makes me lethargic. So I had to go out and, and buy something else because I don't even know what, what, what that is. Yeah, so the whole the whole percentage conversation is is a big thing that's always ongoing. Uh, my personal opinion, I think it's an average at best, and it's not what I focus on when I'm um, when I'm deciding on my own product. Uh, what I focus on, and what I tell customers, what I suggest that customers focus on is genetics and the grow style specifically. Um, just because, like, if you're gonna get a sun grown, you'll probably have like a little more specific flavor from it. Um, versus like an indoor and like a hydro or something but at the end of the day blue dream blueberry and haze like it's it's genetics right so let's say something 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 like a new strain comes in i don't know what it is no one's tried it what are the genetics maybe i've tried the two strains that make it up or three strains or whatever it is right and 
by those genetics of what those strains should do, like that is what I go off of if something new comes in that I don't know what it is. Um, so I think genetics and knowing the genetics are really important as a bud tender. Yeah, we just did a, a terpene panel last month at the World Trade Center in Tacoma. Uh, had Alison Drayson and, and True Terpenes and some other great panelists on board. And um, David Haldreth had made a really interesting uh, point about CBD and THC percentages being the gas on a vehicle, uh, the analogy of driving a car, whereas terpenes were the steering wheel. It gives you the direction you want. Do you want euphoric, energetic, uplifting, or do you want to be uh, relaxed? And that's going to be the direction is, is more of the terpene profile, where the gas is, the percentage is how fast you're going to go. Um, and so I, I found that pretty interesting. Um, so it is about genetics. I think it's about the, the smell and the nose, and when everything's packaged, it kind of takes that away. But that's maybe a podcast right. for another day. Yeah, and that's the one thing. It's like like a big thing is the nose knows, right? And our customers have they have to trust that our nose knows, I guess is the best way to put it, because they can't smell it, right? A big thing is terpenes. And if you if you can't initially smell those terpenes and kind of guess what they're gonna do, then that's where our job comes in. We have to convince someone that this is what it's gonna do. And with that, we're gonna roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid, this is The Talking Hedge. I wanna thank all my guests for being here with the Bud Tender panel. That's Alec Langston, he's a Bud Tender at Dockside Cannabis. Uh, Brian Yeager right here, CEO of LemonHaze.com. We have Ashley Herkett, bud tender at Green Lady Pot Shop in Olympia. On the line with us is Rebecca Berry, Senior Account Manager at Work. And also on the line with us is Claire Kaufman, Director of Client Services at Brightfield Group. Previously recorded is Tom Geiger, Communications Director of the Union in Seattle, UFCW 21. Also Kara Bradford and David Moret, Co-Founders at Viridian Staffing. And Zara Cole and Tyler Nestorenko, of Bud Tender's Ball. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't, and I'm out.